Hey everyone, this is Peter Weigel from Fig by Fig, and in this video I'm going to talk about how to destroy the SARS COV-2 virus with ultraviolet light. This is something that actually someone in the medical community reached out to me about. They were interested in doing this, they didn't have the resources that some larger organizations have. So I'm going to walk through what you can do with ultraviolet light, some of the risks, some of the downsides, and a little bit of the science behind it. So a quick summary, the best wavelength to kill viruses is 260 nanometers. If you're looking for a UV source to use to kill the coronavirus on your medical equipment, look for something as close to 260 nanometers as possible. Now there's no data yet on the effects of UV light on this current coronavirus, but it's very similar to the SARS virus from the early 2000s in terms of the structure of the virus, which means a lot of the studies done on the SARS virus should apply to this new coronavirus. The required UV dose to kill SARS is about 1,350 millijoules per centimeter squared. Time required, the UV time required to kill the virus is equal to that target dose divided by the intensity of whatever the lamp is that you're purchasing. So if you're purchasing a lamp, you want it to be near 260 nanometers, you want to hit this dose of 1350, and you want the intensity to match whatever this time is that you're calculating. Now, N95 masks themselves appear to degrade at a UV exposure of greater than 20 joules per centimeter squared, which means you would get at least 10 uses from each mask. But I spoke with some folks at the University of Nebraska who have been doing this in the past few weeks, and they've found that their masks physically degrade just from using them, just from overuse, before UV exposure causes them to degrade. They actually can't form a seal properly, and that happens after three or four cleanings. So it's unclear if you can extend this further than that just based on the way these masks have been built. So there's the quick summary. Now I'm going to jump into the details. So first, what is UV light? UV light is just another color of light, but it is not visible. So you actually have visible light right here in this middle spectrum, and that covers everything from purple up to red. Ultraviolet, which is what UV is, is a shorter wavelength of light down here. Shorter wavelength means higher energy, and the energy is high enough at particular wavelengths to damage the protein within the virus, specifically the RNA within the virus. You can think of a wavelength the same way you would think of wavelengths with ocean waves. So this is an example ocean wave. You have the crest up here and the trough down here, and that determines the wave height. The wavelength is the distance from one crest to another crest, and the same thing is true with light. So a shorter wavelength means that these crests are closer together. So UV light destroys viruses, as I said a little bit earlier, by damaging the RNA inside of the virus. This is a picture of a virus. This is a similar structure to the current coronavirus. And this pink squigglied up thing in here is RNA. Now this is some data from 2016, and this shows the effects of UV light not on the SARS virus, but on something called MS2, which is a bacteriophage kind of virus. And this is the spectral sensitivity on the y-axis. Essentially what you're seeing here is right around 260 nanometers, you have a maximum in terms of RNA absorbance. And RNA, again, is the thing inside of the virus. That's what gets injected into living cells and that's what tells living cells to create more of the virus. So if you absorb UV light in this virus, you cause the RNA to randomly mutate. Now there's, there's another type of technology that's being pushed by the government right now, and that's called VHP, which stands for Vaporized Hydrogen Peroxide. This is a large-scale solution. There's a company called Battelle that's currently working on this, and the reason the government's pushing this is because they can. This requires more funding, but it can account for more masks at one time than ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, or UVGI, which has currently been being, being tested over at the University of Nebraska. So in the University of Nebraska situation here, you can see that they don't have as many masks in one area, whereas with uh, VHP, you can have quite a few masks in one area. But the difference with vaporized hydrogen peroxide is that you're working with a dangerous chemical, which is hydrogen peroxide that's toxic to humans. And it's in vapor form, which means you could ingest it, you could breathe it in and have serious lung damage. So this has to be done in a controlled environment and it requires uh, the right kind of equipment to make this happen. Now UV on the other hand is, is relatively low cost. You can just buy a UV lamp and make sure you don't look at it or get exposed to it. VHP is much more expensive because of all the safety regulations required. 
UVGI is somewhat difficult to set up, again, because you need to make sure that you don't expose yourself to it. But VHP, I would say, is very difficult to set up in comparison because it's just that much more toxic. Now, the downside to UVGI for large-scale cleaning is the number of masks you can clean per hour, and this really depends on the setup. Whereas with VHP, you can clean a high number of masks, probably on the order of thousands of masks per hour. So getting to the two viruses, I mentioned before that you can compare the original SARS virus with the current coronavirus. And the reason you can do that is because of how similar they are. So what you have on the left here is an SEM, that's a scanning electron microscope image of the SARS virus. And the virus is on the order of 100 to 500 nanometers here in diameter. That's what each of these circles or spheres is. The current coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, the thing that causes the COVID-19 disease, looks quite similar. This is a different image, so I know it might seem different to you, but on the scale of how viruses look, this is fairly similar. And while there's no scale bar in this image, they should be about the same size. So from this, we can assume, even though the effects of the current coronavirus are much different than the effects of SARS and the way it spreads to the population is different, it should behave similarly to UV light based on the shape of these things. So with that in mind, we can look at the effects of UV light not on the current coronavirus, but on the original SARS virus, because that's what we have information on right now. And, and this is really what it comes down to as far as data goes. I said before that you want to target a wavelength of 260 nanometers. So what is shown here in this report from 2004, right after the SARS virus hit, are two different wavelengths and their effects on the fraction of surviving SARS virus. This top curve is at a wavelength of 365 nanometers. This lambda symbol is what we use for wavelength. 365 is still UV, it's still harmful, but to a much lesser extent here than 254 nanometers. At 254 nanometers, which is very close to that magic wavelength of 260 nanometers, almost all of the virus was eradicated within 15 minutes. And I say almost all because we get down to 0.001%, which is as much as this study was able to detect. It's at the limit of the measurement technique. Now, these numbers are important because they also correspond to certain doses of UV light. At 15 minutes in this particular study, and that correspond to a dose of 3,600 millijoules per centimeter squared. And the dose is the essentially the number of ultraviolet photons, individual quanta of ultraviolet light, that are hitting the virus. Now, you can see that in this particular case, 15 minutes is not really where you first hit this minimum line, this dashed line. It's closer to about 6 minutes. And at 6 minutes, the dose is something like... 1,350 millijoules per centimeter squared. So we can use that as an approximation of how much dose, how much UV dose at an, a wavelength of 254 nanometers we need to eradicate the SARS virus. But that's not the only thing we have to consider when we're considering using UV light on medical equipment. The other thing is how does the medical equipment withstand UV exposure? And the particular thing that I was asked to look at by this medical professional were N95 masks. So how much UV exposure can N95 masks withstand before breaking down? And in this particular study, this is from 2019 by this Applied Research Associates uh, organization, they found that after a dose of 20 joules per centimeter squared or 20,000 millijoules per centimeter squared, they did a pressure test for their masks, and these are the different mask models they looked at, different uh, companies that produce different N95 masks, and they were testing for a pressure of 160 millimeters of mercury. And they found that in these two cases, for the 3M1860, sorry, three cases, the 3M1860, the Kimberly-Clark PFR, and the Moldex 1512, there were several masks that failed while the other three passed. So it's safe to say that at about 20 joules per centimeter squared, masks will start to fail. So if we want to be safe, we can say that 20 joules per centimeter squared is the UV dose at which we no longer want to use our N95 masks. If we go with the previous slide and we saw that we wanted a dose of 1350 millijoules per centimeter squared to eradicate the entire virus, then that puts us on the order of 10 to 15 UV cleanings before the masks deteriorate. But I got in touch with the lead author at the University of Nebraska study, Dr. Lowe, and he told me that just over the last few weeks from them doing their testing, they started to find that their medical providers 
were not able to make a complete seal with the mask after three to four uses. This doesn't seem like it has to do with the UV cleaning. It seems more like it has to do with just overwearing the mask. These masks were not designed to be worn for several days or weeks on end. And so it's possible that just the friction of the mask rubbing against the human skin is enough to deteriorate the quality of the seal. And if this, the mask doesn't seal, it no longer gives you that high level of protection that you're trying to get from the N95 mask. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about a little bit of the math behind this and give a few examples on how you can figure out how long you need to expose your mask with UV light given a particular type of tool. So this is the basic equation relating dose, intensity, and time. Time in seconds is the amount of time that you need to expose your mask on each side in order to exterminate the entire virus. Dose is going to be that number we had, 1350 millijoules per centimeter squared. That's how many photons per unit area you need to hit the mask in order to kill enough of the virus that it's effectively gone. And I is the intensity that's usually specified by the manufacturer. So the first is this torch style UV lamp system. This is what they have at the University of Nebraska. And the nice thing with this is that it can be used to shine UV light on an entire room of masks. So you could potentially uh, cover many masks in a short period of time. So in this case, if you need to calculate the intensity from a stated power of the tool, so some of these tools will give you a power instead of an intensity, this is the equation you can use. In this case, I is still the intensity of UV light at a certain distance in this case. P is the UV power from the lamp. So this is just the overall output power, not at a certain distance, but all the power coming out. And then D is the distance from the light source. So the intensity will decrease the further you get from the light source. At the University of Nebraska, this is according to Dr. Lowe, after I spoke with him, the intensity hitting the mask is about 0.4 milliwatts per centimeter squared, and you can kind of see in this image there's a torch in the back as well as in the front. And so that's going to be 0.4 milliwatts per centimeter squared on each side of the mask. They exposed for 15 minutes, or 900 seconds, and that got them to a dose of 360 millijoules per centimeter squared. Now this is below the number we found from that article of 1350 millijoules per centimeter squared. But the reason they did this was because they performed internal studies of their masks and found they were able to eliminate all traces of viruses and bacteria and whatever else might be on the masks with this amount of dose. Which is why internally at the University of Nebraska they chose these values and that's perfectly okay. To be safe, if you don't have the ability to perform internal testing at your medical facility or if you're doing this at your home or something like that, then you want to target this dose of 1350 millijoules per centimeter squared. So in this case, in the case of the University of Nebraska setup, that would correlate to a time of 56 minutes. Now, if you go with something a little bit more uh, realistic for a lot of people who may live at home or people who work in smaller medical facilities, you might go with a UV lamp that you can put on your desk. Now, in this case, Going from a power to intensity calculation is a little bit different. There's a 2 in the denominator instead of a 4, and that's because instead of light emitting in all directions, it only emits downwards. And so you can assume that half of the light that would emit upwards gets reflected and shined downwards, and so the intensity is twice as strong. So in this case, I is still intensity. P is the UV power from the lamp. This particular lamp that I chose here is from this company, Larson Electronics. I am not saying that it's the best lamp. I have no relation to this company. It's simply a lamp that I found online with a quick Google search. It puts out 2,400 milliwatts for this particular lamp. D, again, is the distance from the light source. And so what we can do is calculate the amount of time you have to expose each side, not, not just one side, but each side of your mask in order to eliminate the coronavirus. And that looks something like this, assuming D equals 1350 millijoules per centimeter squared. So it has this distance squared relationship. The closer you are, the less you have to expose it for. But now keep in mind, if you're too close, you won't expose all parts of the mask equally. So keep that in mind. And you can see here that this is a, a weaker system effectively. If you're only 15 inches away, then it's going to take you over an hour for each side of the mask. So if you're trying to do just one or two masks a day, this is probably okay for you. But if you're trying to do an entire hospital's worth or an entire medical floor's worth, you're probably going to want to go with something that the University of Nebraska is doing with their torch style system. In fact, a lot of hospitals already have this equipment available, and that could be something you can repurpose for this application. 
All right, so some conclusions real quick. UV cleaning is likely to eradicate the new SARS-CoV-2 virus, but it can take a while, beyond an hour even, and that depends on whatever your setup is. Um, you can't really clean as many masks at once as you can with vaporized hydrogen peroxide, but you can set it up relatively easily within your own healthcare facility, which may be something that's appropriate for certain organizations. These VHP, these vaporized hydrogen peroxide systems that the government is funding, are being sent out, but they're only being sent out to hotspots right now. I know there was one sent out just a couple days ago to the Seattle area. They're probably going to target New York soon, probably going to target Michigan, New Orleans, but there's a lot of country out there. And if you need to clean your masks immediately because you're running low on supplies, this might be something that works for you. And I want to say one more thing. UV light is dangerous. This is an invisible source of light. Keep that in mind. UV light is invisible. You should not look at it. It should be properly housed. There should be no way for you to look at it. It can cause blindness. It can cause skin cancer. Do not treat this as a regular light bulb. This is a dangerous source of light, and it has to be treated as such. Okay, I hope this was useful for you guys. I hope everyone's staying safe. And if you have any questions, comments, or would like me to talk about anything else, please leave a comment below. All right, thanks. Have a great day.